We're in the region where you can find Japan's largest castle, the world's leading center for pearls, the 800-year-old pottery-making tradition, the most famous beach. The main cities are connected by the Shinkansen, the Japanese bullet train. It's a 15-minute ride between Himeji and Kobe. We're visiting both of them with the intention of also discovering some off-the-beaten-path experiences nearby. Whoa! Welcome to Hyogo Prefecture. Hyogo is located in the Kansai region of Japan's main island, and we're spending three days here. <laughs> the adventure starts in Himeji, famous for Japan's first registered World Heritage Site. And there it is, right in the city center, surrounded by modern buildings. We'll be back. We're first heading out of town for a Japanese food culture experience. There are so many types of noodles in Japan. In Western countries, we hear about ramen, soba, yakisoba, maybe udon, but here you discover that that's just the beginning. We're coming from Takamatsu, located in Kagawa Prefecture, which is considered the udon capital of Japan. And a few years ago, we dove into the ramen culture in Yokohama, where the dish was first imported from China and exploded in popularity. Now, here in Hyogo Prefecture, we discovered that this is the birth place of one of the most popular types of noodles in Japan that we had never even heard of before. So many. So many is this very thin noodle. Only three ingredients here to make the noodle. Wheat, flour, and salt. Production and consumption have evolved over the centuries, with this story beginning 1,200 years ago. Today, somen comes at a standard size, but not in the past. You know why these noodles are so long? Remember, it's a traditional dish for a wedding. So the party lasts all day. Ah! <laughs> so that the marriage can last forever. <laughs> See how long they are? Look at how many stages here traditionally to prepare so many, 19 stages. Today they use machines in some of these steps here, but here's something very unique about so many. It is aged. Just like wine, so many you can consume either fresh or aged, and they have different tastes. This is unique compared to any other type of noodle. So it stays there in the storage for months? Maybe half, half a year. Half a year? Wow. No. Here's the modern production. Still 22 stages including the storage. We're at the Somi Museum in the city of Tatsuno, just west of Himeji. This is also the home of Ibonoito, Japan's best-selling hand-stretched somi. We can also see the factory, the real production of Ibonoito noodles, very famous brand here in Japan. The red oh, one is the uh, most popular one. Different thickness, is that right? Yeah. Wow. It's like so perfect. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You look impressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very impressed. More? More? More. More. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of responsibility here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Traditionally, so many is eaten cold, so I asked for the cold version. This is delicious. There's nothing else here, just the somen and the sauce. Wow. I think I never had noodles this thin. Love it. The black is even thinner than the red. Top quality. Very good. Isn't it? It's amazing. Wow. I never thought I'd enjoy cold noodles, but I love it. I love it. This is Amazing. Can you tell the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. It's delicious. <laughs> yes, but can you tell the difference? Yeah. No, tell me then. No. <laughs> I love it so much that I'm bringing this one. Look at how beautiful. Now you may wonder why this area became so famous, you know, for salmon production, because it had everything here. High quality ingredients, easy transport, and also easy labor. Rest is history. It's a beautiful area here, right? Different. The mountains, it's beautiful. You know what Hyogo is also very famous for? Sake. So, with alcohol? No, no alcohol. Which one do you want, Gordon? <laughs> I know you. Wow. Very sweet. 
almost got a little bit of a apple taste. Wow, it is. It is so sweet, so smooth. Now this one here, uh, this is the non-alcohol version. You can taste a little bit of the rice on your side also. <laughs> We're at Oimatsu Sake Brewery in the city of Shiso, 45 minutes from Himeji. Lunch is a feast here. Wow, we came to a brewery for lunch and look at this. Mm. I keep getting impressed how we never eat something twice in Japan. Everywhere we go, it's always something different. The only common thing is the rice. This house is a 200 years old. <laughs> can you ask if I can take a picture of her? Yeah. <laughs> This soup here has sake sediments. I can't believe I'm eating sake in a way. <laughs> Order of drinking is food. First, second, third. Mm -hmm. Slightly less sweet. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Next. Yeah. Slow down. No, come on. <laughs> Least sweet. And this one was? Like a white one. Light, very light. Like um, white wine? Even lighter. Very light. So which one is your favorite? I don't have a favorite. You don't? No. I think I like the first one. The very first one that you tried. I thought that that sweet. one was very sweet. <laughs> exactly. And smooth. And we'll close with yogurt and ginger tea. So good. I love it. Oishi, <laughs> oishi. How old is the brewery? Two hundred fifty-seven years old. Same family. Wife of the eleventh generation. Wow! So why this region is good for sake production? Because of the water, they have pure mountain water, and also the temperatures. It is three to five degrees colder here than in the surroundings. And the quality of the rice is very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The drive back to Himeji was so beautiful. And soon we discovered why this castle is the most visited in Japan. Much larger than I expected. Oh, you see that this castle in the movie or uh, maybe the TV drama. Uh huh. It's still authentic, yeah. right? Yeah. Welcome to Himeji Castle. Original walls here from the 16th century. The 1609, it was built. Uh huh. It took eight years to complete the castle. So you see the different pillars here. Yeah. If you remove one of the stones, uh huh. All the stone walls are fall down here. Wow. And then they can close the door. Wow, that's but so uh, smart. <laughs> Short, huh? <laughs> We are so lucky to be here exactly when the main keep is open for the first time. Very steep stairs over here. In Japan, it is very difficult to find original, authentic structures due to many reasons, like disasters, wars. But in Himeji Castle, you still find a lot of authentic parts. This area is an example, this entire area here, 400 years old. Look how big these timbers are. This is one piece of wood that came all the way from the first floor until the fifth, also original. From the outside, it looks like a five-story mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. but uh, inside it's the seven, including, including the basement. The basement. Uh -huh. That's Himeji train station. The castle town used to go all the way there. It's the place the important person such as top of the samurai warriors okay. stayed. For defense, mm -hmm. huh? mm. to throw rocks and hot oil on the enemies. Uh, 
I love that you have a place right here to put your phone and take the perfect picture. Can I join? Of course, everyone can join. Yeah, come here. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder, this is the most visited castle in Japan. From Himeji, we headed to Kobe, the capital and largest city of Hyogo Prefecture. Kobe is located between the sea and the mountains, and I love to discover that they are all decorated. He recognizes my floor, <laughs> just with the key. 28th floor. Look at the view from here! Wow! 28th floor. We can see the whole Kobe from here. The other half is on the other side. <laughs> this hotel is exactly on top of the train station. So convenient. And look at the bathroom with a view! <laughs> Not a view to you, <laughs> a view to the city. Breakfast with a view. Kobe. Oh, wow. Do you think the basketball player was named after the city? Kobe Bryant? Well, who knows? Maybe. Look at this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Whoa, whoa, food is ready. Go. Get the document. Oh, hi, Yogo We're now in Kobe, the largest city in Hyogo Prefecture. Actually, very close to Himeji. And to Osaka. And to Osaka, to Kyoto, to Nara. It's in between everything. Kobe is associated with what, Gordon? Japan. And when you say Kobe, what do people normally think about? Basketball. That too. Mais. Beef. Yeah. Kobe beef. But you know what? To the Japanese people, Kobe is also associated with something else. Pearls. There are no two pearls that are the same, same size or that look the same. They're all unique. Cultivation of uh, pearls were discovered in Japan. The world's leading producer of marine pearls. Pearl processing is big business in Kobe. They source various pearls from all over the world. <laughs> Uh, from uh, Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi. Mississippi River, yes. <laughs> These are all natural pearls. And everything here. Yes. It's like a secondary product of the aqua pearl. Inside are like bacteria or sand or some little tiny insects. Wow. So they happen to go into the same shell by accident wow. and they form the, the tiniest pearl in the world. So this is the tiniest pearl in yes. the world. Wow. All this here is worth about 40 million yen. <gasps> Enough to buy a house. So creative, it's so beautiful. So I'm choosing my own pearl here? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Surprising work for someone who's not very delicate with things. <laughs> I love it. You know what? 70% of the world's pearl circulation take place right here in Kobe. That's why this is known as the city of pearls. 70% of fresh water or seawater, sea everything? Oh, yeah. Wow. Actually, there are like more than 300 companies in Akitano, the northern part of Kobe. Wow. It's because <laughs> Processing mm -hmm. skills. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. These skills will now be used to finalize my jewels while we go to a place that also plays a significant role in the pearl business the port, the main gateway to the world. Who's the lunch for today? Delicious, so good. Mm. Excited, huh? Delicious so far. The cruise takes two hours and goes for a tour around the harbor while you enjoy a gourmet French meal on board. Chocolate, this might be orange or tangerine. It's an orange mousse now. So delicious, so delicious. What an unforgettable lunch. Such a great view from up here. That, by the way, is the second longest suspension bridge in the world. It used to be the first until a couple of years ago. Still very impressive. Mm. 
Well, my pearls should be ready by now. Here are my masterpieces. Unique in the world. You never find another pearl similar to this. How does it look, Gordon? You tell me. Like? Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Her father makes this. Yes. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Can I see it? Wow! Oh, I love it. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful huh? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The company is already 50 years old. Wow. Oh, and my father used to study uh, chemistry. So you basically grew up within pearls. Yeah. I grew up with pearls. Maybe eating pearls. Oh, lucky girl, lucky girl. We can also eat pearls. <laughs> Not really. This is just simulating pearls. But in the future, they're going to have pearl powder, right? Inside. And they're a good source of calcium. Mm. Delicious. White chocolate with macadamia. How very do you good. like the pearl? Very good. <laughs> See this? Mm -hmm. The advantage of being a girl. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> From the port area, we came to Kitana, which is a must-visit neighborhood here in Kobe. Now, it is very hilly. It's on top of the hill, so the best way to get here is by public transport. They have a bus that does a city loop, or just get a taxi. This area has a very European view, you know, Western-style mansions, because we settled here were the diplomats and the merchants who moved to Kobe when the port of Kobe opened to foreign trade. One thing very cool you can do here is check if there were any representatives from your country so that you can check their houses. We're checking the house built by the U.S. Consul. Wow. This was the American consulate called Hunter Sharp's house. Colonial style. One thing unique about this house here, look at the fireplace. He has tiles. The piano has a candle holder. Is this sinking? Ah, go to this corner. Yeah. Be careful, Gordon. Don't destroy the house. The wife had an entire room for herself here. The makeup room. I have a rather to go not This one has some incline mm -hmm. to release mm. water. Yeah. From here, they could see the port over there. The ships would arrive and they'd go to work. <laughs> Today, forget it. Look at the amount of buildings in front. But we can see our hotel from here. Look at that. We're all the way up there. The house also had a maid's room. But look at this. It was in the back of the house, right here. Is this area very expensive to live in? It's so charming. It's a little inconvenient uh, to go up to, and down. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's not so expensive. Oh, uh, okay. Uh -huh. But to visit is a must. Yeah, you must come here. Today, most consuls don't live in Kobe anymore as the consulates moved to Osaka. What are your impressions of Kitano? It's old, probably charming. wealthy. Charming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, popular. Lots of people. Go inside this one now. Oh, the old and the new. Huh? Wow. There are about a dozen houses here that you can go visit. And in addition, there are so many cute shops, cafes. Have you seen the cutest Starbucks yet? Nope. I suspect I'm going to. It's even an attraction, you know. A lot of people taking pictures here of the Starbucks house. You need the Tokyo banana, then you can try. Yes, yes. thank you. Yes. I mentioned in the Takamatsu video that we had a wonderful guide there, and let me introduce you our wonderful guide here as well. Midori san. Yeah. She saw that I tried a lot of Kit Kats in my second trip to Japan during the Olympics, and she brought new Kit Kats to try. Tokyo banana, right? Wasabi, wow, and milk tea. Whoa, these are so different. Uh, Gordon, this is for you, huh? Oskari-sama desu. 
It's a hint of wasabi, but it's very sweet. So not spicy at no. all? No. Tastes like banana. It does, yeah, yeah. Very, very good, I love it. Now, this chocolate here, milk tea, the sweetest chocolate I've ever had. What do you know about me, Gordon? How much I like sweet? You like sweets, yes. I love sweets. <laughs> Kobe seems to be always booming, especially at night. From Kitano, it's a pleasant 15-minute walk downhill to the entertainment district around Kobe Sanomi Station, where our hotel is located. Today we're visiting a small town that preserves the original Japanese lifestyle. This is Tamba Sasayama. And the Japanese lifestyle involves a bicycle, of course. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Uh-oh. What? Up the hill. <laughs> it's electric. Is electricity not on? Did you turn on the bike? There we go. Woo! I love this. <laughs> Tamba Sasayama is well known in Japan for the traditional pottery style that originated in this area in the 12th century. It's really interesting. And to this date, the city lives and breathes art. There's a small museum here where you can see some historical pieces like this one from the Momoyama era in Japan. And in this other room, samples of work from the local artists today. He had even preserved the old kiln that is extremely long. That's from 1895. It is so long, like this, so that a lot of pottery could be prepared at once. It starts here. Uh, yeah, combustion and, chamber, yeah. And it goes up. Yeah, 1300. Degrees? Yes, degrees, degrees. yes. Degrees. Today, the artists have their own at home or at the studio. Tamba pottery has history, 800 850 years. 850 years, yeah. yeah. You may think we're in the middle of nowhere, but we're just a little over an hour's drive from Kobe, Kyoto, and Osaka. We've been having delicious meals here in Japan, and you know what's equally impressive? The pottery they're served in. Most of them are handmade in places like this, stuff that you never find in a conventional shop. There are 60 potteries in town, and you can visit the artists. Masafumi Onishi-san has been creating ceramics for 23 years. He's the fourth generation in his family. Oh, he has a son. <laughs> he doesn't know if he's in Potter yet. It's a very good thing. It's a very good thing. This was made 500 years ago? Yeah. Wow. In Tamba. This color is made in Tamba. This is made in Tamba. This is made in Tamba. This is made in Creativity, huh? Very impressive how he got the perfect size here for the lid. That's what I'll try to make. Let's see. Uh -huh. There are so many techniques here oh, for oh. everything to work. When he's doing, you just think it's oh, like, ooh, and everything magically works. But no, you need to pay attention at the lines, make sure that uh, everything is smooth and beautiful so that it doesn't just fall apart. Also, you need to prepare it bigger than the end product. So you can see that this is much bigger than this because when you go to the kiln, it's gonna shrink. It's gonna shrink about 10%. You know, it's so interesting because I've always seen people doing this on TV, on the internet, and now I'm here preparing this with one of the masters of the craft in Japan. Oh my God! <laughs> I'd have never imagined that uh, to prepare a cup like this, you go by layers. How do you write this? This is precise. It is! <laughs> Masafumi's son will organize to mail my piece back to the United States. He then took us to see his own kill. Oh, wow. 
That is a combustion. ギガマとかやったら簡単だけど、ね、もうピッてボタンを押すだけやから。あ、そうだ。エレクトリックオーブンだ。It just push the button. But yeah, <笑> yeah. For three days. この中にね、僕入って。入っていって、試作品をこう詰めていくみたいな感じで、そうそう、腰がね、バックリック。The advantage of using this one is because of the natural color that comes out. And all the ashes wood has a special ashes, so that goes to the pottery and it makes a different patterns. And with the electric, you don't know exactly what you're getting. そうそう、ただまあつるっとした、何もただ焼けただけ。Just big, no patterns. But here. We don't know the, what kind of thing you can get. Uh-huh. 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 Sasayama developed as a castle town, and you can still visit the castle ruins. It has a lovely city center full of small shops and restaurants. Hi, <laughs> So what did you get again? Wild boar. Oh, your first time? Yeah. You know what I got? Sasayama beef. Kobe beef has the fame, but Sasayama beef is raised just like Kobe beef, but it's from Sasayama. Bean Tamba Sasayama, eating with this pottery from Tamba Sasayama, and now we know how it was made, where it came from. We can appreciate not only the food, but also the pottery. This is an 850 year old tradition here in this town. Wild boar. Supposed to have a strong taste. No, I didn't think so. It has a different taste, but it's not. I didn't think it was really strong. I think it's good. <laughs> This is unbelievably tasty.、Mm. One of the best beefs I've ever had. This beef is really special. <laughs> Now we're closing off with probably the most different ice cream we've ever had. <laughs> Black soybeans ice cream, mine. And for Gordon, it's the same version, but with some Japanese pepper on top. I wonder if they're sweet, you know? Is it spicy? No. Is it sweet? It's sweet, but then it tastes of pepper. Uh huh. And there's something else here some sort of pickle. There's so much craft. In everything, even this little ice cream.、Mm. What does it remind me of? I don't know, maybe mochi? I have no idea. But it is sweet, it is worth it. Now, how about staying in a traditional Japanese village? You can overnight here too, in comfort. Konnichiwa! Here's a success story in Japan. You know, a lot of small villages are disappearing because people are moving out. It was the case of this one here. Just 20 years ago, out of the 12 houses, seven were abandoned. The community got together, they started turning things around, creative rentals like this one. Today, only one house is empty because the owner just passed away. But there's a totally new life in this community. Traditional Japanese house. Yep. In the 1950, the population began to rise, and by 2008, there are only five households, 19 villagers left. So, this facility opened in 2009. So, how many people can stay here? <laughs> there, are, there are many rooms,、uh -huh. but six is the maximum、okay. because they have six beds. But、uh, maybe one more person can stay, maybe around here. Okay. <laughs>、uh -huh. The local mother b r i n g the breakfast. Ah, four mothers. Four mothers. Yeah. Her mother. <laughs> uh -huh. Her mother is 74 years old.、Wow. Her mother is one of them. So, how much does it cost to stay at a place like this? $44,000 for one house. And then the each person pays $5,510 per person. Per person. Per night. Per night.、Mm -hmm. Service fee.、Mm -hmm. And this included the breakfast. Okay. okay. That price is、uh, decided by the occupancy rate.、Mm -hmm. 30% occupancy rate. Okay. So that they can return the money to the bank. Uh-huh. And already finished. And I mean, return the money to the bank. Thank、you
traditional house but with modern toilet. And in case you're wondering, yes, there is free Wi-Fi. <laughs> One of the residents of the village is a chef, so there's also a very cozy French restaurant here. Arigato gozaimashita! For foreigners, it is so easy to visit Hyogo, even the countryside, as you can go by train. And also, you can use the main airport in Osaka for international flights, and then all the main cities are interconnected by Shinkansen, the bullet train. So close and so easy that you could even go for day trips. But as our experience here showed, it's better to stay a little longer because there's so much to do. We only really scratched the service. Thanks so much to Hyogo Prefecture for inviting us for a small taste of the region. It is definitely worth coming back for more.